Okay, so we are given a table of values for f, f prime, g, and g prime. It tells us that f and g are differentiable, which really also means that f and g are continuous. Remember, if two functions are differentiable, that means the slope exists. It means that it has to be a continuous function. And it tells us that g is strictly increasing. Um, you've got a whole bunch of values. Okay, part a, and then it gives us a definition for a different function, h of x, which is f of g of x minus 6. The first part says, explain why there has to be a value for r between 1 to 3, such that h of r is negative 5. So what it's asking is, why does the y value of h have to hit a value of negative 5? Okay, notice they're talking about an interval, and they're asking, why does a y value have to be a certain value? So it's probably talking about the intermediate value theorem. But even if you're not sure about that, it gives you an interval to work with. So let's just figure out the values of h at those values to start, just to see what happens. So I'm going to figure out what h of 1 is. So I'm going to use this definition they give us. So h of 1 is really f of g of 1 minus 6. Uh, g of 1 is given is 2. So this is f of 2 minus 6. And then f of 2 is 9. So 9 minus 6, this gives me 3. So that's h of 1. h of 3 is f of g of 3 minus 6. g of 3 is 4. So this is really f of 4 minus 6. And then f of 4 is negative 1. So this gives me negative 7. So notice that h of 1 is 3. So we don't know what h of x looks like, but here's the idea. We know at 1, it's 3. We know at 3, it's got to go to negative 7. So there's a point here, there's a point here. We're trying to prove that somewhere between 1 and 3, it has to hit a y value of negative 5, which is right here. And this has to hold true because if the function is continuous from here to here, from 1, from 1 to 3, it has to hit every single y value in between. That's what that intermediate value theorem says. Okay, So we can make the conclusion since h of 3 is negative 7 and negative 5 is between these two numbers that we just figured out. And the reason why this works is h is continuous. You do not have to use the words mean va intermediate value theorem. You can just say because it's continuous, there exists r value between 1 to 3 such that h of r is equal to negative 5. So I'm just restating this because we are saying that can be true. Okay. The next question says, Explain why on that same interval it has to be true that the derivative is equal to negative 5. Okay, so think about what theorem have we worked with where it asks you to find on an interval the derivative is a particular point. So I'm going to go ahead and find the slope on this interval because it's talking about the slope. So let's figure out what this is. h of 3 minus the h of 1 over 3 minus 1. Now, I found these values up above in part A. So this is negative 7 minus 3. This is 2, so I end up with negative 5. So notice what we calculated here, this is your average rate of change. What they're asking us to show here is the instantaneous rate of change. But remember the mean value theorem says that if you have a function that is continuous and differentiable, because of the mean value theorem, there exists a value c between this interval such that h prime of c is equal to negative 5. And this is the key. It's only because this function is continuous and differentiable. It has to be true that the average of change is going to be equal to the instantaneous rate of change at some moment in time. The next one is a little bit different. So they give us a function for w. I want to find w prime. Now, before we ever plug in numbers, I always take the general derivative first. 
So W prime of X is, this is your second fundamental theorem. You have an antiderivative. We're gonna take the derivative. So remember it undoes that, but we're gonna plug that G of X in for T. So this is gonna be F of G of X. And because the bound is not just X, we have to use the chain rule. So I need a G prime of X here. Now go ahead and plug in the number. So I'm gonna plug in three for X. And then G of three, we calculate it as four, or it's actually in the table. And then these two numbers, we can grab from the table. This is negative one, this is two, so this is negative two. And the last one is our inverse question. So it's saying G to the negative one, this is the inverse function of G. I wanna find the equation of the line at X equals two. So on the inverse, we need to find two comma some number, but on G, this is the same as this. So if I figure this out, I can figure out this number. So if you look up back up at the table, notice the X coordinate that gives you a G value of two is one, so this is one. So step one is, there's my point. So I know my equation is gonna be y minus one equals some slope quantity x minus two. So now I need the derivative of the inverse. So the derivative of the inverse is one over the original g prime of the inverse at that point. And we figure, we're trying to figure out what happens at two. So this happened to be two and this is one fifth. So there's my equation right there.